Hello and welcome to another video on non-homogeneous systems of ODEs. In this video, I'm going to talk about the slightly more complicated case of a system of equations with a matrix that is not invertible and an inhomogeneity that is not within the range of the matrix. Okay, so um, I'm not going to go through the homogeneous calculation because this matrix is the same as the one I went through in the previous video on the playlist. So let's just write down what we got for that X uh, homogeneous solution X of H. And that is C1 times 1 minus 2 plus C2 E to the 4T times 1, 2. So important to notice is that the range of this matrix, in other words, the set of vectors that the columns can add up to, is actually in the same direction as the eigenvector or the eigenvector for the non-zero eigenvalue. Okay, so that is um, an important piece of the puzzle. And what happens here with this vector three one in the inhomogeneous term is it will have a component in the direction one minus two and a component in the direction one, two. And because it has a component in this direction, we're gonna run into trouble if we just try to use the XP equal to constant vector V. This is pretty much what happened with second order equations when the inhomogeneity was a solution to the homogeneous equation. And so in this case, what we would say is that the inhomogeneity has a component parallel to the one of the um, the uh, one of the homogeneous solutions, and that's the one without the exponential term because there's no exponential term up here, and so um, because it has a component in that direction, we're going to have to take xp to be v times t, and that won't even be enough. We have to add in a u, a constant u, to fix that problem, and you'll see how those two vectors get calculated as we go along. So. Uh, so what we do is we take xp prime and we find that that is going to be the vector v and that means that we have an equation above here this equation when we plug in xp it becomes v equal 2 4 1 2 times vt plus u plus 3 1 uh, okay, so uh, let's write that down and like multiply it all out. So we're going to have V is equal to, now the T, once I multiply this matrix by the VT, the T is just a scalar. So I can bring that out in front and this just becomes 2, 1, 4, 2 times V plus 2, 1, 4, 2 times U plus 3, 1. And so because I have a constant term a constant term and a constant term or a constant vector constant vector constant vector and here we have a t multiplied by a vector uh, we can break up this equation into two pieces and force the two separate pieces to be equal so this t times vector has no other term to balance it with a t multiplying it so it has to be zero itself so that gives us a 2, 4, 1, 2 vector multiplied by V equals 0. And we can go through that calculation or just look at it and see that uh, the solution to this is going to be a constant multiplied by a vector 1 minus 2. Okay, that's one solution to this, that piece of the, or that's a solution to this one piece of this equation here. And now let's write down the other one. Now that we know a form for V by solving the first piece here, we can now plug that into V in the previous equation, which is going to give us C times 1 minus 2 equal. Now we've already set this guy equal to 0, so we just have to include these two terms. 2, 4, 1, 2 times u plus 3, 1. Now what I want to do with this is I'm going to bring all of these guys onto one side and this on the other. So let me just rearrange that. I'm also going to rewrite this matrix equation as vector times u1 plus vector times u2, where this one is 2, 4, and this one is 1, 2, as I've done in previous 
videos. So I get um, 2, 4 times u1 plus 1, 2 times u2 plus c times, now this one is going to have to get moved over to the other side, so I get a minus 1 and a 2. And then this one is also going to have to get moved over to the other side, so that becomes equal to minus 3 minus 1. Okay, so how do we interpret an equation like this? We could we can try and solve it. Notice that this is two equations with three unknowns, so that seems a little bit problematic. Let's just draw a picture first and see if we can simplify our problem a bit. So this is going to be uh, the first component here, and this is going to be the second component. And so I have, um, let's see, I'll do in um, in green, I'll do this vector. 2, 4, and that will be up here. So there's vector 2, 4. And then you'll notice this one here is parallel to it, so I'll still use green for that one. And that's going to go through this point. They're in the same direction. And then in gold, I'll put down this one. So this one is going to be going in the minus 1 direction and then 2 up here. So that's this guy here. That might look par or perpendicular, but it's not quite. And then what I want to do is I want to find a linear combination of these three that give me the vector minus 3, minus 1. So minus 3 is 1, 2, 3. Minus 1 is there. So I want to get that vector from those two. Okay, so um, how are we going to do that? Well, you can see that one of these is really not going to do very much for us, right? I can do very well with just one of them. And so what I can do right away then is I can say, let's just say u1 equals zero. I'm not going to bother using it at all. And now let's see, can we reconstruct our solution or reconstruct minus 3, 1 using the other two vectors. So clearly we should be able to go back in this direction far enough, and once we get to the right spot, we'll be able to figure out where this guy intersects. And what we have now is a vector here, which is, that'll have a negative coefficient multiplying the 1, 2 vector. And then we're going to have a vector. This looks like it'll have a positive component multiplying the minus 1, 2 vector. And that should be the coefficients that we need, the u, 2, and c coefficients that we need to make the vector minus 3, minus 1. Okay, so what we can do now that we've gotten rid of this u1 part of it, which didn't really give us anything um, worthwhile, is we can write down a matrix equation again using this column here and this column here and multiply that. So we have a u2 in the first component multiplying the first column and a c in the second component multiplying the second column. And that has to come out to minus 3, minus 1. So now we can row reduce the matrix, the augmented matrix, with a minus 3 and a minus 1. And we get, now here we get, uh, we're going to subtract twice the first row from the second row. So we'll get first row, we're not going to change. And we get 2 minus 2 is 0. And here we get 2 plus 2 is 4. And in the last entry, we get minus 1 minus twice minus 3 is minus 1 plus 6, which is, which is 5. And so now we can write down an equation for c4 times c is equal to 5. So c is 5 over 4. And then we can use that and the other line to get u2. u2, and if I bring the minus 1 times c over to the other side, I get u2 is equal to c minus 3. And 3 is 12 over 4, so this is 5 minus 12 over 4, which is minus 7 over 4. So you can see that uh, the c value here does correspond to a positive multiple of minus 1, 2. And the minus 7 over 4 is a negative multiple of 
one, two. So that's what we expected. And now I could uh, reassemble or assemble the x of t vector function, which is going to be t times v. And now v was u1, u2. And no, sorry, uh, so v is this one here, c1 minus 2. So c is 5 over 4. So I put a 5 over 4 in the first entry. And then I have to multiply 5 over 4 by minus 2. So a 2 and a 4 cancel, leaving me with minus 5 over 2. And that's v. And then I add to that u. And u is just the u1, u2 components. And we chose u1 to be 0 because it wasn't really required. It was parallel to the other one. So we had a 0 there. And for u2, we just found here that it was minus 7 over 4. And so that is our, um, our xp expression. And this gives you a method for solving the inhomogeneous case where the matrix is not invertible and the inhomogeneous vector, constant vector, is not in the range of that matrix.